in the steep hills beside the town of Petros in Morgan County. Tennessee's Brushy Mountain State Prison carved a spot in the nation's history of crime and punishment. Prisoners that were really a problem, they would be threatened with being sent to Brushy Mountain. The prison shut down in 2009. Now its bars have gone from hard time to hard liquor. Tennessee whiskey. A distillery and a tourist attraction. Being built in 1896, it operated as a prison for 113 years. You get to experience some of that. Trying to profit on the prison brings Brushy's history full circle. Because the whole reason Tennessee built this prison in the 1890s was to make money. A decision that only came after a bloody battle at the town of Coal Creek over the previous system of making money on convicts. After the Civil War, southern states were broke. So convicts were for rent. The state leased inmates to private companies to work in coal mines. The system not only made the state money, it saved money because it did not have to house prisoners. The companies built their own stockades at the mines. By the 1890s, the system had gotten corrupt. It was de facto slavery. But there was another injustice. All this cheap convict labor took the jobs of free coal miners. In 1891, at the town of Coal Creek, the miners fought back. They raided prison camps, tore down stockades, put the guards and the inmates on a train, and sent them out of town. The coal companies sent the inmates back, and the governor sent troops to protect the prison camps. It was a showdown. Free miners in Tennessee faced the state's militia in an armed battle. The troops eventually overwhelmed the miners, but the fighting shed light on a shameful system of leasing convicts. The miners lost the final battle, but they won the war when the state abolished convict leasing. By banning the system of leasing prisoners, the state would lose rent money and have to build prisons. The solution was for the state to get into the coal mining business for itself. They built Brushy Mountain State Prison and coal mine and used their own prisoners to mine their own coal. It turned out to be a money-making venture for the state. Tennessee would not go back to being broke. Instead, it would make a killing by forcing inmates to do back-breaking work. Convicts laid the railroad tracks to Brushy Mountain, built a four-story prison out of wood, and then started digging for the riches below in 1896. Now, none of the inmates at Brushy were technically on death row, but there's a cemetery here for a reason. Doing time at this prison could be a death sentence. We're gonna see the frozen head mine. The coal that they mined here was very high in methane. It means it's very explosive. If you hit one of those explosive pockets, boom, the whole thing will go up. Kind of just a recipe for disaster. Dozens of inmates were killed in mining accidents. They worked all day, and if they stopped, they found motivation from a leather strap. Torture all over his body. In 1932, former inmates wrote a series of articles about the horrific conditions at Brushy and how after a day of abuse underground, inmates spent the night in an overcrowded, disease-infested wooden building. When the state's new commissioner over prisons inspected Brushy Mountain, he called it a fire trap and one of the worst things in the state. Improvements were on the way. And in the mid-1930s, the state built this new fortress of stone. All made from sandstone, harvested on site. If you look at it from uh, up top, you can see it is in the shape of a, a Christian cross. It just gave them some Jesus, for lack of a better term. But yeah, they wanted to moralistically reform these people. But even with these better facilities, Brushy Mountain was still a violent hell. It's a very volatile work group. These are convicted criminals that you are putting in a hole together. Inmates killed inmates. Even guards killed other guards. And the mines remained a death trap. Prisoners who took all they could stand stood up for themselves the only way they could. They went on strike and refused to work. You can force hundreds of people down into a mine, but it's a lot harder to make them come out. Ratio to guards to prisoners was not always a favorable one for the guards. And at least half a dozen times, inmates took guards hostage and refused to come out of the mines until their complaints were heard. 
The madness of this coal mining operation continued until the mid-1960s. That's when yet another cave-in killed a couple of inmates convicted of relatively small crimes. All these accidents, combined with the fact the mines were no longer making money, led the state to shut them down for good in 1966. Here's your coal, you know, all over the ground here. Now these mines were closed for good, but what do you do with all the inmates? They don't have a job anymore, and you have all these idle hands with even more time to do the devil's work. Not to mention, plot ways to escape. Join us for that as we continue our series back to Brushy Mountain.